I'm so excited to share with you my travel camera bag for 2023. This is a setup I'll be using for two weeks in Italy. You might or might not be wondering why I'm bringing so much gear. The thing is, I'll be traveling with just my mom this time without my usual adventure buddy. So I want to take this opportunity to document our precious time together on top of filming content for this channel. I'll be relying just on myself this time, so everything here is out of necessity. Let's dive right in. First off, let's talk about the bag itself. I'll be using this Peak Design 20 liter everyday bag in black. Even though I've been bringing this backpack everywhere with me every time I travel, I've still been mostly using the Brevity Runner backpack just because it's so much smaller and lighter. With much more gear this time, the Peak Design backpack is going to be super helpful. It has a million pockets, three dividers, and it's weatherproof. I love the mag latch design for the top compartment. For lighter travel days, like just going to the museums or eating at restaurants, I'll be using the everyday sling in three liter. Now let's talk about gear. For my main camera, I'll be using the Canon R6. I love the Canon R6. I love the in-camera stabilization, fast focusing, awesome viewfinder, and the touch display. I've always shot in RAW for my photography, but recently I've been practicing something new. I've been trying to shoot in log in 4k at least 30 frames per second i never had to worry about this before but now it's especially important to have high capacity and high performance memory cards in my kit lexar has graciously sent me a few of their newest sd cards so i have a chance to explore and share my honest experience with you i've been shooting on the lexar silver pro sd and the lexar 2000 x sd on my last few trips both cars have high speed performance that's great for shooting in 4K. The V90 is actually great for shooting in 8K, but sadly, R6 does not have 8K capabilities. I love the high write speeds of these cards and the high capacity allows me to shoot for an extended period of time without worrying about running out of memory. It's always nice to have extra cards on hand, especially when we're traveling, but they can get very costly. These cards are great budget options for high performance memory cards. Next up, we have the lens. I'll be packing four lens with me on this trip but three of them will always be in my backpack. The 24 to 70 f2.8 is a great overall lens. This will be my main lens when I'm touring cathedrals, eating at restaurants, or inside hotels. This lens will be great for street photography too. The fast aperture will allow me to shoot in lower light situations, and the focal length range is really versatile. I love that I'm able to have a little bit of the telephoto look at 70 millimeter. One thing I really want to work on throughout this trip is to document all the hotels that I'll be staying at. It was always an afterthought in the past and I always regret it when I'm home and looking back at the footage. Some of the places we stayed at were really beautiful and I wish I just had documented them better. The 24 to 70 millimeter is going to be a great lens for that. The 70 to 200 f4 has been my favorite travel lens since getting it. I love the compression with this lens. This will probably be the main lens I keep on my camera when I'm outside seeing. I did realize though after reviewing all my footage from Japan and Taiwan was that when I have this lens on the camera, I was shooting a lot less than I usually do. And I think it's because the telephoto lens, it takes more effort to find your compositions or frame the shots. So I was just shooting a lot less compared to using a wide angle lens. So I'm glad I realized that now so I can be more conscious of it in the future when I'm using this lens. By night, I'll be relying mostly on my prime lens. The 16 millimeter f2.8, it just so lightweight that it really doesn't hurt to just have it in your backpack all the time. The 16 millimeter is really good for vlogging, so I can use this to vlog with my mom. It's also a great lens for landscape and architecture. The lens was so helpful when we were in Barcelona at the Sagrada Familia. Sagrada Familia is so big and so tall. We were not that far from it. The 16 millimeter, it was able to capture all of it. There's definitely going to be a lot of iconic architecture and beautiful landscapes in Italy, so the 60mm is going to be super handy. Lastly, it's the 35mm f1.8. This lens used to be my favorite lens. I love the fast aperture. I feel like it was easier to use than a 50mm, but I especially love using this lens for portraits. Fast aperture is really helpful. It will be the perfect lens for documenting the beautiful people I meet on my trips. Now I want to share some must-have 
accessories for the Canon R6. Undie filters are a must if you film outdoor a lot. I have the Polar Pro polarizer and undie filter combo and the Freewell mist filter and undie filter combo. The Freewell filter is especially helpful because it's a variable undie filter. Luckily, I have a step-up ring so both of my zoom lens can share the undie filters. I had a rough time filming in Europe last year when I forgot to bring these filters with me. Because of that experience, I actually made myself a packing list so I won't ever forget them again. Next is the microphone. I'll be using the Sennheiser MKE 400. This will be the main microphone on the Canon R6. It's been really helpful for vlogging and it's also great for capturing ambient sounds when I'm traveling. I love using the original sounds from my travels in my travel videos. A camera strap is a must if you hate putting the camera in and out of the backpack. Usually, I just have the camera on the strap I just carry it around my neck. I won't be able to rely on Andrew for vlogging this time, so I actually have to work really hard to record some vlogs. Besides the 16mm with the Canon R6, I'll also be vlogging with the DJI Osmo Action 3. This will be a great alternative in addition to using an iPhone for vlogging. Even though this camera only has a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor, it has great in-camera stabilization, really wide lens, and it has pretty decent built-in microphone. I've been enjoying using this way more than Insta360 One R that we used to have. Paired with a fast micro SD card, this camera can film in at least 4K 120 frames per second. And lastly, the drone. In the past, I've always tried to include Creator Juice drone work into my travel videos. I especially love the footage captured by the DJI Air 2S. But this time, Andrew won't be coming with me, so it's either I have to bring the drone and fly it myself, or never think about it again. No regretting it afterwards. Are drones an essential part of your travel camera kit? Let me know in the comments below. And that's it. That's my updated camera bag for 2023. If you have any questions about my gear or if you have suggestions of what I should try next, leave them in the comments below. If you want to follow my adventures in Italy, follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more helpful content. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!